when a spectator goes to a golf tournament, is it a reasonable expectation that they might get hit by an errant shot? That's the hook. And it's also usually the result of a hook. Think about that pun. Let's go guys. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, a woman at the Ryder Cup, a spectator, was hit in the eye by an errant shot from Brooks Kepka, and the shot apparently hit her right in the eyeball socket, shattering her orbital bone and exploding her eye to the point where she has permanent loss of vision in that eye. And she's now contemplating legal action. And the question is this, from a legal perspective, what recourse does she have? Is it legitimate? Who can she sue? And what can she sue for? Sorry guys, we gotta go home. Barney, we have to go home. Okay, fine, let's go. Before we get into it, we're gonna do anecdote, science, and then the law. Ah, anecdote, when I was 16 years old, I was playing golf with my dad and we were golfing slowly because I golf like a 16 year old golf. Barney, can you move please? You're kind of blocking the shot. If you pee on the camera, we would have a problem. We'll just wait, no biggie. We were playing slowly. My dad decides to wave the group on the tee through. We're about 120 yards out. We move to the side of the fairway. I hear a strike of the ball. I hear someone scream four. I duck in the cart like this. The golf ball comes through the back of the cart and clobbers me right in the face, out of the air, no bounce, straight off a drive. It hit me just above the teeth, just below the cheekbone and eye, right in the fat part of my chin. I got knocked out of the cart onto my back. The guy comes up to us. What does he say? Have you seen my ball? True story. Random cameo. Yeah, yeah, I owe you. you. <laughs> You're a football coach? Yeah, I'm a football coach. Good. You know. Destroy yeah. them. How about I go on this right now? <laughs> yeah. Have a good one. Okay, and the science, golf balls go fast. They weigh 1.62 ounces. Coming off the club head of a professional golfer, they travel at speeds upwards of 150 miles an hour. By the time they reach the fairway, they've slowed down substantially to 50 miles an hour. But imagine, between the club face and the fairway, depending on where you get hit in the face with the ball, that ball can be going anywhere between 150 and 50 miles an hour. That's fast. Let's go. Okay, so this tremendously unlucky spectator gets a drive clean in the eyeball. I mean, you imagine that Kepka's driving from maybe, let's just, I don't know, 100, 200 yards away. The ball travels through the air. It hits this woman square in the eyeball. The question is this now, can she sue somebody? Who can she sue? What can she sue for? And on what basis can she sue? I'll give you the spoiler alert. Yes, she can sue. Anybody can sue. It doesn't mean they're gonna win. Can she sue with any chances of success? Let's discuss. I don't know who's bringing the camera in here. All right. <clears throat> First thing, this does not constitute legal advice. Do not take this video as though it's legal advice. And although it will make you smarter, it is jurisdictionally based. All of law is fact-based, jurisdiction-based, applicable law-based. If you have any questions, consult a lawyer in your jurisdiction after you've stated all the facts and they will give you a proper legal opinion for $10,000. Not $10,000, but... Mm. So, second thing, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I think if I'm looking at you through your screen, it should be there. Hit the notification bell there, the subscribe button there. Do it. I'm gonna be doing a lot more law vlogs. I'm gonna be doing a lot of cooking videos. Channel's a good channel. I don't know why, uh, you know, my mother says the channel's good. I don't know why there's not more subscribers. In Quebec, this would be what we call extra contractual liability. You have contractual liability, which would be if the parties are bound by a contract and someone does not respect the terms of that contract and causes damages, that is what we call contractual liability. You sue on the basis of the contract. Extra contractual liability is when there is no contract. Two strangers who are not bound by contract, one punches the other in the face. Extra contractual liability in Quebec is governed by Article 1457 of the Civil Code of Quebec. Nobody cares about that. Extra contractual liability. In order to succeed on a claim, you have to prove 
of fault. Damages and a causal link between the fault and the damages. So they have to have committed a fault. Someone has to have sustained damages. If someone has not sustained damages, you cannot sue because you haven't sustained any damages. What are you gonna sue for? You can't sue for loss of income unless you've suffered loss of income. You can't sue for pain and suffering unless you've suffered pain and suffering. So you're going to have to have suffered damages if you are going to make a claim based on extra contractual liability. There has to be a causal link between the fault and the damages suffered. Now, an example might be smashing a pumpkin onto someone's car just because it's Halloween, let's take that example. You can be sued for extra contractual liability for causing damages to the car because you did commit a fault by smashing the pumpkin. And there's a direct causal link between smashing the pumpkin and the damages sustained to the car. Now, hypothetically, let's say you smash someone's pumpkin on the sidewalk and the person runs out of the house to try to chase you and in running out of the house down the stairs, trips and breaks their leg. There would be an argument there that smashing the pumpkin did not cause the damages of the broken leg from the person falling down the stairs for chasing you for smashing the pumpkin. In law, you can sometimes have what's called actus novus, which means, okay, you did something wrong and it resulted in damages, but there was a new act that intervened that is now responsible for the additional damages sustained. But we're getting complicated here, whatever. Let's take this case with the golfer. She willingly goes to a professional golf tournament as a spectator. When you go to a golf tournament, is it a reasonable expectation that you might get hit by an errant ball? I think most of us would answer yes, and as such, you are inherently accepting those risks when you go to a golf tournament. Uh, incidentally, there have been a few cases on this which I was surprised to read, and by and large, they've all been dismissed because the golfer assumes the risks that are inherent to the sport when they partake in it. Same thing with the spectators who go to spectator sports where there are certain inherent risks. A lot of you might be saying to yourselves, yes, there's also a disclaimer on the back of the tickets that say we're not responsible for any injuries sustained during the event, blah, 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 blah. Generally speaking, those are applicable to the extent that they're not in super fine print that nobody can read or that they are hidden or that they're so convoluted nobody can understand them. They don't exclude gross negligence and deliberate act. So it's not just because you bought the ticket and agreed to the terms of the waiver that uh, if someone was grossly negligent in setting up the event and you sustain damages as a result that you can no longer sue them. And even if there are certain inherent risks and liability that every spectator assumes when they go to a golf tournament, is that the end of it? Not necessarily because the organizers could have conceivably set up the course in such a way that it was so dangerous and negligently so, that their responsibility can be incurred. Let's just say that one of the holes is a dog leg left, and the organizers set up the spectators on the angle of the dog leg turning left. For those of you who don't play golf, like a dog leg is bent. The tee box would be here, the green would be somewhere here, and the players would either lay up or try to drive over the dog leg if they could. Now let's just say that the organizers set up the spectator viewing section right, here and one of the golfers hits either a drive or an errant shot that hits a spectator who's in a bad position because the organizers put them there in a bad position, in theory there could be liability. So it's not obvious that the spectator in this case has absolutely no claim. I would just say based on the ordinary run of things, she probably has no claim because I would be shocked if the Ryder Cup viewing section was so dangerously set up that it was an objective danger to anybody with reasonable ability to set up a course or an event. Also anybody going to a golf tournament knows that there's a risk of getting hit with an errant shot. Now I'm sitting here playing mental legal games and I'm wondering can the woman have a claim against Kepka who hit the foul shot and I would say obviously not unless Kepka teed off into a crowd out of anger or out of malice or as a joke. The only way Kepka could be held personally responsible for um, injuring a spectator at a golf course, whew, that's good, would be if he did something so grossly neg would be if he did something so grossly negligent that it would qualify for the requisite fault for extra contractual liability. To succeed against the organization or the course, she would have to establish that there was some negligence in the planning or the seating of the spectators, or she would have to establish that the course organizers negligently placed the spectators in spots where balls were likely to land, causing bodily harm. But generally speaking, these types of freak accidents, they're just freak accidents. And the innate reflex to try to find someone who's responsible for the damage, it's just that. It's an innate reflex and not necessarily something that can be justified in fact and in law. Here, get into the movies, Duster. Get into the movie. <laughs> you get a little actor part in there. You out of here? <laughs> Take care. All right, have a good night.
What's probably gonna happen anyhow is that she is going to lawyer up, send a letter, ask for damages, all sorts of stuff in the millions in the hopes of arriving at a settlement of a lower amount. They have insurance, the insurers might get involved, uh, and they'll probably settle out of court. Because as far as I understand from the facts at issue, it was just an absolute freak accident with freakishly severe consequences. Although in researching for this vlog, I was surprised to see how many times this had actually occurred in the past, at least three or four times from what I was able to find easily online. I guess there are a lot of golf balls being struck at a lot of tournaments with a lot of spectators and they get hit and they get hit in the eyes. That is it. May all your drives be straight and... What? Peace out.